So I'm starting on the rudder today. Uh, the first step is to separate the R1003 top rib into two parts by uh, basically cutting, you know, cutting along that line and removing some of this excess material, cleaning everything up, deburring. Uh, so that's step one. Step two is to basically do the same thing for the bottom rib, uh, 1004. And step three is to uh, separate the shear clips. So I'll probably do all, all three steps, you know, basically at the same time because it's, I'll be cutting them with the bandsaw, you know, cleaning it up with the one inch belt sander, and then cleaning it up and deburring it with the 3M wheel. So uh, I'll get started. And we're off. So uh, peel the blue stuff off the top of the top rib and then marked it with a Sharpie uh, where I was going to cut. Didn't really need to mark it. The slot that I'm following with the bandsaw is wide enough and has enough margin of error that, you know, you're going to be grinding the little tabs down with a file or with the, uh, I use the one inch belt sander uh, right there. So uh, the, the line was just, you know, trying to be careful, give my eye something to follow. But uh, so I suppose a reasonable question might be, well, why in the world are you cutting a rib into two pieces, you know, A and B pieces, just to end up riveting it back together uh, at the end anyway? And uh, the answer is, it has to do with how the rudder is assembled. So with the vertical stabilizer, it's wide enough, uh, you know, thick enough. The fin itself is thick enough that you can reach in and, and get to the back side of the rivets, uh, you know, from the inside by putting your arm inside the thing. Uh, whereas the rudder is uh, narrower, uh, too narrow to be able to do that. And the way it's built is, is you actually rivet uh, halves or, you know, two, the two sides of the ribs and uh, stiffeners to each half of each skin half, I'll say skin panel, uh, and then you sort of fold them together like a zipper almost, riveting the inside as you go. It's pretty clever, really. Um, but so that's why these ribs have to come as uh, a single piece that needs to be cut into two pieces and then riveted back together, uh, you know, as you assemble. So there's the bottom rib, uh, cut apart, then clecoed back together. So right here, I decide maybe I'll try using the tin snips to cut apart the um, the shear clips uh, because there's a pretty big gap in between them and uh, a lot of excess material. And I gave up on that right away. Those things, compared to the bandsaw, the the tin snips just make a mess. They just you know they bend uh, bend the metal as they're cutting. So uh, I don't know if anyone uses shears like that, or if pretty much everybody just invests in a inexpensive bandsaw and uh, goes that route. But the bandsaw is definitely the way to go. The one I have is only a couple hundred bucks at the most, and a little bit of little bit more for some, you know, fine tooth bands for metal cutting. And then uh, you know I also use that one inch belt sander to grind away a lot of excess material. I'll probably go through belts pretty quickly, but so far the one I've got has been holding up and I just bought a pack of extras and, uh, you know, they're disposable. So here I'm, I'm uh, working on each of the shear clips with uh, a file and there they are. All right, well, so that's it for the first page of the rudder. Uh, steps one, two, and three, the top rib, bottom rib, and the shear clips. So I did a little more deburring off camera, you know, in these notches and whatnot. Went through, uh, went over everything with Scotch Bright pad, and um, yeah, so it looks pretty good. I went ahead and clicked the A and B halves of each rib together just to get a get a feel for you know what it's going to look like when it's completed. And um, yeah, the next step will be to start uh, to cut all the uh, stiffeners to uh, to length. So that's next.